In this video, we're going to talk about management of intersusception. So you have diagnosed this pediatric patient, a toddler, to have intersusception. How would you manage this patient? So the options are taking the baby uh, to the operating room for a surgical resection. And the other option is radiologically, you reduce it. You either use a pneumatic air enema or a hydrostatic barium enema. So we are going to talk about how to do these three procedures. But before I move, I wanted to make sure we ask the examiner if there is any contraindication to using the radiological procedures because the first line is radiological reduction. So we want to make sure that there is no clinical evidence of dehydration, which means you need to first resuscitate the baby a little bit before you do these radiologic reductions. There is no sign of shock, peritonitis, or a radiographic imaging suggestive of uh, perforation. In these patients, please do not perform the pneumatic air enema or the hydrostatic barium enema as these will lead to failure. So let's say our patient is doing hemodynamically fine and there is no contraindication to doing any of the um, non-operative managements. So how do you do a pneumatic air enema? You place an enema tip um, in the child's rectum. Uh, the child is placed in a prone position and you insufflate into the colon and you do it under uh, fluoroscopy and once the intersusception has been reduced you can use fluoroscopy to make sure the contrast goes all the way to the small bowel. Uh, in this case we use air for reduction. Now the other option is the hydrostatic barium enema. In this case you use barium. The disadvantages of using barium is that if there is a perforation, it would lead to contamination and rapid uh, fluid shifts because of the hypertonic nature of the barium. Otherwise, it's, uh, you can use either the hydrostatic barium enema or the pneumatic air enema. Remember the rule of threes for the hydrostatic reduction using barium, which would be uh, three attempts, each of three minutes duration, and enema bag with three feet above the table. So you have done these and you're successful. What is the success rate of these interventions? As high as 80 to 95%. Now you've done the enema and the, and the toddler or the child is doing well, how would you proceed? You observe them for a little bit of period of time, making sure that there is no pain, they're tolerating diet, and they can be discharged. There is no need to keep them overnight or observe them for 24 to 48 hours. You can easily uh, discharge them after observing them uh, for a small period of time. Just make sure uh, that the child is reliable and your, re your exam is reliable and the, uh, the child is able to tolerate fluid. Now the child comes back uh, with pain again and you diagnose again that this ha baby, this child has intersusception. How would you like to proceed? I will repeat the abarium enema or the air, air enema, whatever my radiology colleagues are comfortable with. If you have used one, you can use the other one to see if that would help. And the take home message is that if it's recurrent, you do not need to jump to the operative technique. Just make sure again that there is no signs uh, of contraindication to the open uh, to the operative report, uh, approach. So this enemas can be done uh, multiple times. Uh, if it's not reduced or if it's uh, recovering again or the child has signs of uh, peritonitis, sepsis or any other indication that the child would not benefit from the air enema or the barium enema, then we move on to the surgical approach. Now for the surgical approach, we, they're going to ask you how do you reduce 
the intersusception. So know the terms. The proximal invaginated bowel is called the intersusceptum. And it carries its mesentery into the recipient loop of bowel, which is called as the intersepsiens. Now the key to successful uh, reduction is constant pinching and squeezing of most distal part of the intersepsiens just like you're squeezing a tube of toothpaste. The intersusceptum is milled in a retrograde fashion uh, to get it out of the intestinal tract. To aid with the reduction in the intersusception, I would also uh, pull out the intersusceptions gently. Uh, it is essential. Uh, I perform both the retrograde milking and the gentle uh, pulling slowly and steadily to increase the intraluminal pressure just like an enema would do. Therefore, it will result in the reduction of the intersusception. That is, and then if there is any lead point or any growth, any meckles or any lead focus, then you would have to talk about resecting that lesion. If there is no lead point, that is the end of the operation. Thank you.